Long COVID, that's a term used to describe persistent COVID-19 symptoms that continue for weeks, even months after recovering from the virus. The condition has baffled doctors and scientists, and now a team of scientists from Stellenbosch University may have found its cause. The discovery of a special molecule that prevents the body's ability to break down clots has since been peer-reviewed and published. Let's get you more on the story now. We're joined by distinguished professor and chair of Stellenbosch University's Physiological Science Department, Risha Pretorius. Prof, it's great to have you with us on the show on what is such an incredibly important development. I think perhaps just as a start for our viewers, outline for us the issue of long COVID. What does it mean? Thank you, Michelle. Long COVID is a condition that persists after you have recovered from acute COVID. So acute COVID is when you are still infective, but after you have recovered, you still have lingering symptoms that uh, can be anything from um, things like brain fog, concentration issues. Some people have uh, heart palpitations, uh, but more serious conditions that affect some of the organs, the major organs organs as well. And these symptoms persist for weeks and even months. And in some instances, some researchers believe that it can become a chronic condition. Wow. I mean, Prof, there was a time, wasn't there, um, in sort of the early months of the pandemic, where the issue of, of long COVID was um, something that was being debated, as in doctors didn't really know what to tell their patients who had recovered, as you say, from the virus, but who still had these really life-altering symptoms. Absolutely. But now it's become more and more accepted that long COVID is indeed a very, very debilitating disease. Mm. The WHO has put it on its radar and they also are looking for methods and researchers to work together to treat and to diagnose this condition. The dilemma, as you mentioned, that doctors and clinicians had in the early days and, and even now is that many of the, the symptoms, uh, the, there is no diagnosis. But we have uh, come uh, very far in, at the University of Stellenbosch. We have also patented a method for the diagnosis of these microclots um, in patients. And we hope to, to have a diagnosis uh, rolled out soon, but then also uh, treatment options in, in the near future. So, Prof, just take us uh, back to, uh, you know, when in May this year, uh, the, you know, long COVID volunteers were captured in this online registry. So, I mean, the research that you've done to date, it's, it's not very old. It's just a few months old. Is that correct? Absolutely. So in May of this year, the Stellenbosch University had a, um, opened up a registry, a South African long COVID registry. And that registry allowed people with long COVID to register their, di their, their symptoms as well as their comorbidities. And they also uh, had an opportunity to indicate whether they would like to participate in a bigger research study. Mm -hmm. Currently, um, we have we are busy analyzing 100 of these long COVID um, samples that we collected from these volunteers. They were absolutely fabulous. And the, the volunteers just um, overwhelmed us with the positive response. Um, however, the study that you are referring to is published on a smaller data set that we, uh, the research was done earlier this year. Um, and in, in the, the new study that you're referring to where the volunteers donated mm. blood samples, mm. Mm. Um, we would just want to confirm the results that's just now published. So the blood samples um, that were taken, they were found to have abnormal amounts of these micro clots. Was this new information that you uncovered? Yes, it, it was new information. And um, as we know that individuals with acute COVID, while they are still infective, have also in increased propensity of blood clots to form, and some suffer from clots in the lungs, and they can actually die from this. So the, the, our current research that was published that, that you're referring to um, showed that these microclots that is found in um, acute COVID while, while they are infective and can cause these damage are persistent mm. in circulation in individuals that suffer from long COVID. Mm. So, so the, the microclots that uh, patients with long COVID suffer from, is this a condition that is in and of itself life-threatening? 
that is what we're trying to find out. And it, obviously, my, any microclot can be life-threatening because it can cause stroke and heart attack and deep vein thrombosis. So microclots in circulation is not a, a disease that we should take lightly. Mm. However, um, th this is still under investigation. We, you know, this is such a new disease. Mm. Uh, we, we just know so little about it. And just to be clear, Prof, these were samples that were taken... Um, from healthy, so-called healthy indiv individuals, people who had been infected with COVID-19, but also people who have type 2 diabetes who are generally uh, more vulnerable as it is uh, to blood clotting. Yes, so our sample was controls healthy individuals uh, to have a baseline, and then we also used samples that f stored samples from diabetes patients who we definitely know was not exposed to COVID because it was taken, the sample was taken before the COVID pandemic. That was our positive control sample, and then we looked at acute COVID as well as long COVID samples to have a comparison uh, to see which molecules are present particularly in long COVID compared to diabetes and healthy individuals, as well as to acute COVID. Now, the reason why we included uh, diabetes samples was that we know that individuals suffering from diabetes or other comorbidities, such as diabetes cardiovascular disease, have a higher propensity to develop long COVID after they have recovered from acute COVID. Mm. So these individuals who um, are still suffering from long COVID prof, uh, you know, to break it down for a lay person, they lack this molecule that would help them to break down ordinarily uh, these blood clots. No. So individuals with long COVID have got persistent microclots, and then they have the molecule alpha-2 antiplasmin and other such molecules in circulation mm -hmm. that is not present at such high levels in healthy individuals or other individuals with comorbidities. And this molecule is increased in circulation, the alpha-2 antiplasmin, and it then prevents microclots when it forms to break down. So in any individual, healthy individual or individuals with cardiovascular disease, small microclots may appear in circulation. However, your physiology will remove the microclots and the process we call fibrinolysis. However, in long COVID patients, the, there's, a, there's an additional molecule, inflammatory molecule, uh -huh. most probably due to the, the COVID infection and then all the uh, molecules, inflammatory molecules that's related to it. And this molecule is then upregulated in these individuals and it prevents the microclots from breaking down. So, Prof, you, you did mention earlier that the next step is now uh, diagnosis, but then also treatment. Is that something that the team at Stellenbosch will also be looking into, the specifics of what treatment might entail? Absolutely. We are working together with a team of clinicians from Stellenbosch area, um, from the Medi Clinic and from other um, facilities. And we are also working together with a team of international experts from various countries, uh, America, um, Germany and uh, the rest of Europe to find treatment modalities, mm. um, not only to treat the, the hypercoagulation or the microclots, but also the inflammatory components of these conditions. Yeah. So um, definitely the next step will be treatment. Yeah. Uh, now that we've discovered the, the molecules causing the dilemmas, we can now work on this. There have been so many issues that South Africa has really been at the forefront in terms of research into various aspects around COVID-19, Prof. And this is really another aspect where our country is leading the way? Absolutely, and, and it is with the help of wonderful volunteers, long COVID volunteers, that has just absolutely come and assisted us with, with research. It's also with the help of volunteers that, um, that, that uh, gave funding, uh, that we've got the, the South African um, Long COVID Registry. So uh, this is ab absolutely a teamwork from various researchers and clinicians. Absolutely incredible work. Thanks very much for all the hard work that you and your team, as you say, have been doing. Professor Risha Pretorius, uh, thanks very much indeed for your time on the show. Distinguished Professor, Chair of Stellenbosch University's Physiological Science Department. Long COVID, we're finally getting some answers into uh, really persistent symptoms that many, many people have been struggling with here at home and around the world.